Good morning, Singapore. Good morning, world. Welcome to the biggest and best breakfast show in the world. It's the big show with Glenn, Angel, Evie, and Sean. It's a lovely, cool Tuesday morning, and so we have a lovely, cool person with us on Tuesday. <laughs> Dr. Geraldine Tan, award-winning psychologist from the Therapy Room. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. I I always laugh at your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so high in the morning. <laughs> but you like, are such like a special. Buffer. You're oh, such a special therapist. You're award-winning. Oh, you are award-winning. Yeah. Award-winning. Very decorated you are. Very decorated. <laughs> Just a wall. Very decorated. You know. <laughs> So plus you have a nice window there we can see out of. Yes. Is it raining, yes. Jerry? It is not raining. It is very cloudy. I think the 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 weather today is a bit confused. It doesn't know whether to rain or to shine. To shine. Yeah. It but just rained here in Topayo, so it stopped already. Yeah. Okay, so FD is saved. Yeah. Because uh, when he did his uh, did weather say... report early on, he said, "Look, you know, it yeah. might be raining where yeah. you're at." And uh, yeah, the people in Topayo. Yeah. They got the rain. Mm. They got the mm. rain. You're going to get the rain soon, by the way. <laughs> so, Jerry, we're talking about oppositional, defiant <laughs> disorder. disorder. Yes. So, better, OGD. Be better known as a naughty child. <laughs> well, that's why we want to have that. Uh, actually, it's really, really difficult because a lot of parents have been coming forward to say, you know, I'm having a lot of difficulty with my kid and I think my child has an issue. Mm. So we're trying to tease apart what is a naughty kid versus a child with ODD, Oppositional Defiant Disorder. But this also <laughs> applies to adults, right? Only kids. Uh, so it's interesting. So um, in actual fact, uh, ODD is usually diagnosed in children. Mm. But apparently there have been uh, more and more people, more and more adults uh, diagnosing themselves with ODD. It's not usually done that way. It's a childhood behavioral disorder. Hang on. You, oh. You're having adults who are diagnosing themselves as having ODD? Well, that's why they, they go online and they, they Google the signs oh, and symptoms. Yeah. And, <laughs> you yeah. can't do that. <laughs> wow. Well, but, but if you hear some of the signs and symptoms, you might be able to identify some friends that also have some of these signs and symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> or us as well. <laughs> you know, the doctors, the, all the doctors out there have these apps right now, yes, right? Yes. Where you don't have to go to the clinic. You see hmm. them virtually. Tele oh, yes, yes. Telemedicine. Right? Telemedicine. Yeah. Telemedicine. Telemedicine. So may, yeah. may, maybe you should uh, have something like that as well, Jerry. Then adults so, will not diagnose they, themselves. You know what I mean? They can, <laughs> they can see you yeah, well, virtually. The, the internet is um, out there. The, the signs and symptoms. People write articles, you know. But I, I mean, if you're in doubt, please go to someone to verify yeah. it. It's quite sad to diagnose yourself, you know, just online and, um, and with a bunch of symptoms. I think I think it's 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 dangerous because you go online, you find the symptoms, and then worst of all, you go online and you find so-called therapies, and then you try and treat yourself. Mm. Man, that mm. could be bad. Mm. It's, become, it's becoming very uh -huh. popular. Yeah, well, People do that all I, the time. I wouldn't. Okay, let's. It can be detrimental. Okay, yeah. let's continue to talk to Jerry on the Big Show TV. Meantime, here's John Farnham and Human Nature. Talking about oppositional defiant disorder. What is Correct. it actually? So it's a behavioral disorder that we diagnose during childhood. So these children seem to be uncooperative. They seem to be like the, the uh, name um, says, right, defiant. So they can be very hostile. Um, sometimes we do see them having uh, academic delays, social issues, uh, which then affect their uh, self-esteem, their confidence, and they find it really difficult to communicate like regular children. So we see a huge um, number of people or parents saying that certain children are naughty. So earlier you said naughty, right? Mm. They can fall into 
three types of categories of naughtiness that is more than naughty. So the first one would be the anger. We see huge anger that they cannot regulate themselves. Um, they would argue. So they have issues with uh, people, not just authority, but uh, usually the people in authority will feel it the most and they can be quite vindictive. They can be quite spiteful. Mm. Wow. So do people yeah. like that, uh, I mean, kids as well as adults, use the word no a lot if they have ODD? Uh, they would well, they would resist many things. So you're right. You know, the no comes up. What I was thinking was also because they would um, have their own reasoning why they cannot. So they don't just say no. They will have a lot of reasoning. They may not be um, uh, low in IQ. So they really can hold a, uh, an argument with whoever that is in authority. Jerry, you, 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 you mentioned that it's not just authority, though. They, it's people in general. So mm. it, it, it could even be their peers. It can be their peers. That's why they have issues with um, uh, social issues. So they would argue, they would get, uh, they have anger issues, right? So they mm. would throw the temper, they would have temper tantrums. Uh, they are very uh, grouchy. Mm. Uh, very prickly, I suppose. So the friends, when they come to them, it's like, oh, why are you in a bad mood all the time? Uh, very resentful. Mm. Is it a mm. phase thing or is it is it a permanent thing? Yeah, do you grow out mm. of it? Yeah, so any of these disorders that we see, it has to last more than six months months and it has to be very disruptive that means you cannot function at home or you cannot function in school uh, or in some of the environments touching on school you said that that they have academic issues um, mm. which leads to emotional problems so they make mm. a decision that i'm not going to follow they, you know they're oppositional right so they make this decision that i i'm not going to follow this i don't want to do this i'm not going to do this and yet they still end up with mm. emotional issues because they're not academically achieving they can be very frustrated so they can have a uh, language delay they can have uh, issues with communication um it's you know, difficulty with uh, concentrating perhaps, so they could have other issues also. Ah. And then they cannot regulate themselves. So they cannot regulate their emotions. So the emotions just explode. And usually it is a very big fiery sort of explosion. Mm -mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Wow. Mm. This is yeah. quite something. Do, do mm. te teachers often... Um, notice this in like the kids and what are like the steps that they can take from there so the teachers do deal with this so it's more than naughty you have a child that is um angry all the time uh, so the girls and the boys may manifest differently uh the boys may be a bit more aggressive even um you know uh, flipping tables or banging tables or i don't want to follow you who are you to tell me um i i'm uh i i don't need to follow whatever that you're telling me mm, challenging authorities so i'm thinking anger management issues here yeah that's what i thought i mean it's as simple as that right i mean why mm, why, so why don't we define it as you know someone who's who has anger management issues because we often refer to adults you know who yes. are like that and we say mm. they have anger, anger management, management issues. issues why can't we say the same thing for the kids why is there this term uh um what, what? oppositional defiant disorder Oppos oppositional defiant disorder disorder yeah yeah so there are other elements also it's not just the anger the inability to deal with their anger so there's this um it's your fault. So I blame you. There's a lot of blaming sort of behavior also that comes with it. Uh, they can be very spiteful towards another person. 
very mean towards another person and they are they know that they are being mean to another person and they deliberately so when they you know anger a person or annoy the person they do it deliberately and yet they and yet even doing it deliberately and knowingly they end up with i would imagine emotional problems like depression anxiety because they don't have friends they they do have depression anxiety and that may develop um but it is more because they they don't know how to deal with their emotions they are very uh frustrated with the environment and not because they don't have friends do they reach a point where they cannot function they can um so sometimes what happens and we'll move into another disorder is that uh when odd is not dealt with properly or they they don't learn how to manage themselves then it can move into conduct disorder so the conduct disorder would then have this element that they have no empathy for the other person they have all the other symptoms but then they don't have empathy for the other uh the 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 people around them right um and sometimes we see that in adults and in adults we diagnose with anti social personality right. disorder hmm. yeah and we see many mm. people actually with yeah. uh, this disorder you do. people who are anti social mm. mm. yeah they just want to yeah. keep to themselves the, all the time the difference between that and being like a introverted person is Which one? Which one? Well, I guess anti-social. anti-social. Yeah, I guess I, I guess Sean's question is that you know I mean I I did say they they keep to themselves you know yeah. anti-social behavior, uh, and so Sean mm. Sean mentioned uh, so what's the difference between that and someone who's introverted? Like how did they know that? Well, uh, okay, anti-social uh, personality disorder in uh, psychology is not somebody that withdraws. It's somebody that does not follow rules. Oh. and is not able to follow rules sorry thank thank you for bringing that up yeah um so you would see some of the uh, criminals who serially just keep committing a crime over and over again okay hold on and jerry let's let's define this on uh, on yeah. the radio yeah okay here we go one FM ninety one point three. It's the big show with Glenn Angel, FD, and Sean Angels in Vietnam. But we continue without Angel, of course. <laughs> uh, it is a Tuesday, and so we have uh, Dr. Geraldine Tan from the therapy room with us uh, on the big show TV. We were just talking about the difference between antisocial and um, introvert, right? So, so what's the difference uh, in psychology terms between someone who's antisocial and someone who's an introvert, Jerry? Yeah, so the lay person often defines anti-social as I don't want to socialize. Yes. But anti-social personality disorder in psychology is totally different. It's a behavior that is usually quite uh, um um impulsive so they do not follow rules they don't follow the norms so you would see a lot of criminals having anti social personality disorder yeah so they can be very irresponsible they can be very um uh challenging behaviors challenging as in challenging the norms challenging authority mm Uh Jerry on our Facebook page Jill is asking a question. Um oppositional defiant disorder. Mm. Could it be a defense mechanism for mm. people who are who lack confidence who, who you know who lack self-worth? 
Mm. So yes, I think what Joe is saying is sometimes you feel a bit embarrassed, you feel quite self-conscious, and then you lash out at, at another person. But this is different. So yes, we do. And if you are able to attribute that behavior to a cause, then that is not ODD. ODD, they're very impulsive. They are um, their behaviors are very challenging. There is sometimes no logic to why they are trying to challenge an authority. It's like, get it done and get it done already. But they would not do the task that is told to them by, you know, an authority or by the adult. Um, yeah. And sometimes I say, oh, the more you tell me, the more I won't do it. Mm, mm. So what, what can parents actually do in this situation? Yeah, so this is also very difficult, right? So we also want to um, see whether it is the personality of the child, so that, that, that uh, temperament of the child, whether they're born with it. So some of them are sometimes a bit more uh, challenging. There are other um, situations where it's it's the home environment where there is inconsistent parenting. So the, the sometimes can, sometimes cannot. So the child gets very confused also. Um, sometimes there is, uh, the home environment can be very challenging, meaning that, you know, parents may be incarcerated or a very dysfunctional family and that might contribute also to uh, such a behavior. Um, so what we want to do is to have the parents find out the underlying issue. So sometimes it's also that the child has um, learning issues that might cause frustration. Mm. And we also want to find out whether, you know, they, they might have other disorders that can contribute to it, ADHD, um, you know, learning issues, impulse control issues. Uh, and then we want to look at consistent parenting. So first thing, find out underlying issues. Then we want to focus on consistent parenting. So we work a lot with the parents because your child only comes to us once a week, one hour every week. But the parents spend a, a large amount of time with the children. So we want to also teach the parents um, what they can do in the home environment. Uh, usually we encourage very uh, embracing environment. That means very warm, very gentle, very kind environment. Now, this is something parents find very, very difficult because this child is so challenging. <laughs> How are they going to be nice to their child? But there is a way. Yeah. I mean, the child is not all bad. It is a behavioral disorder. It is not, the child is not spoiled. The child is not, um, uh, um, you know, flawed. And, and therefore, we need to discard the child but the child can be very trying for the parent. Of course. Any yeah. wonder why mm. fewer people are having children <laughs> these days? <laughs> yeah. And also, I mean, you mentioned early on uh, inconsistent parenting. You know, I mean, during my yeah. time, it was yeah. very consistent. You naughty, you get caned. That's it's true. as simple as that. <laughs> that? You're yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, everything is good. You yeah, know, we go yeah. off for ice cream, we go catch a movie, you know, I get like 50 bucks from my Ooh, you know, wow. parents. Okay, I'm just, I'm just putting a figure out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you... you, you if you're well behaved, you know, we love you. If you're very naughty, we kind of punish you. Mm. That's consistency. Mm. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Don't Consist you think? Yeah. Consistent. I mean, we turned out very well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I Consistent think. parenting is when you go to your mom uh, after you did something bad, she slaps you. So you go to your dad instead and he slaps you too. Right? Okay. That's consistent yeah. parenting. Right? No, them beat you. Yeah, oh, no. He just yeah. took it up. Uh, yeah, he took level. it up a whole okay. lot. Okay. Uh, can we continue this yeah. on the Big Show we'll, TV we'll, before we'll, we get into trouble? Yes. Yes. We're talking about consistent parenting and how inconsistent parenting and things at home can lead to this condition. Assume the child's got the condition. It is because of inconsistent parenting and what's going on in the home. When yeah. you 
treat or counsel this child, are the parents there? Because it sounds like the parents need as much counseling as the child does. Do yes. you do that together or is it done separately? Mm. So, so uh, there, are, there are sessions that we do family therapy and family therapy is very useful. So there's no that he say, she say, they say. Mm. It's everybody in collaboration. Um, but there are times that parents need their own space so that we they can download their frustration. We can also then um, fine-tune some of the methods that they can use. We also work with the child because we want to deal with their behavior and also their own emotional needs. So every individual would require their own session. Wow. Because I'm just mm. thinking, mm. that child is going to say things to you, which mm. you will have to translate to the parents. Yes. Are yes. they generally accepting of what this child is saying? When the child says, look, you know, mom and dad are like this. It's driving me up the damn wall. <laughs> it is definitely not easy. Um, the, pa the, the, the child has their own opinions. And we know that parents would find it very difficult to receive um, some of mm. the opinions of the children. So we do navigate it very gently, especially when the child has such a strong opinion. Uh, sometimes it's, it also tells us the, the, the parent has a very strong opinion or no opinion at all. It can be very dichotomous. Mm. Yeah, so we need to work with the parents. If the parents have no opinion, can you imagine? We need to slowly build them up to ensure that they give clear boundaries to the child and to ensure that they then follow through with some of the behavioral strategies that we've put in place. <laughs> Otherwise, they go home and they undo everything. <laughs> There's no mm. point. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. We've got a lot of very interesting uh, uh, statements coming through on our Facebook page Please. this morning. Uh, for example, yes. um, and th this is a comment from Prashant, who is very active when you're on. Uh, he says, in many societies, it is a problem that children with ODD uh, uh, and who are constantly defined in school are stigmatized uh, as just mm. troublemakers. Do you see yes. that happening here in Singapore? When people don't know what it is because it's such uh this disorder is not um often diagnosed so that's why the child gets labeled all sorts of diagnosis so it could be naughty lazy you are a difficult child it could be that the child has adhd because the symptoms do overlap where they are a little bit more impulsive where they don't think before they speak. Mm. Yeah, so the, when the, the symptoms overlap, you would need someone to help you to ensure the correct diagnosis is provided so that we can deal with the behavior accurately. Mm. Uh, Damien is also asking, can ODD be caused by a lack of attention? Yes, so they, they do display um, uh, impulsivity, they can be inattentive, uh, but we also want to ensure it's not comorbid with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which also a large number of them do have. <laughs> okay. There's so many different disorders. Can can yeah. can ODD be caused by the lack of vitamin B12? Ayo. <laughs> <Sorry? laughs> um, the, we we would not have a blood test done to say, oh, you know, you lack certain vitamins. Um, perhaps the researchers are uh, looking at the different disorders and also looking at what can indicate to us. So blood works are, is one of the areas that the doctors are definitely looking into to see whether they, they can find any indications mm. so that you know we, they can read it um, and that becomes another data. 
that we can use to help diagnose different disorders. But at this point, I think if let's say you need to calm your child down and you need all the vitamin Bs, um, you get the, the child-friendly one. I think they are child-friendly ones. But fish oils are usually the recommended um, go-to uh, vitamin that, that they would um, encourage parents to feed the children or give right. the children. Right, because you know, I mean, we, we all know, okay, uh, certain vitamins, yeah. like uh, vitamin B, I mentioned yeah. earlier on, vitamin B, series, B, yeah. B12, B12, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is, uh, is an uplifter yeah. in terms of, um, you know, it's a mood uplifter, yeah. Yeah. so to speak. But, I mean, we don't know. Is it scientific? I, I, I was just asking the question earlier on. I have no idea. Yeah. So, so Jerry, what other interventions are there uh, from, from a parent's point of view? I have mm. an ODD child. Mm. Uh, how do I how do I deal with this child? What interventions are so, there? So we always look at abilities. Purple Parade was just on Sundays, yes. uh, sat Saturday, Sunday, yes. Sunday. Yeah. So yeah, so you know we look at abilities. Same thing for disorders. Why are we focusing on all the bad, 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 bad? Mm. So children with ODD can be very creative. They love the hands-on work. Uh, well, they, they're more inclined to hands-on work, right? Um, and when they choose to do it, they do do the work brilliantly. So what we do need to do is to try and find out their strengths and their abilities. So a lot of them are very creative. If we tap on their creativity, um, they feel really proud. They feel very encouraged. It gives us that opportunity to praise them, which they would thrive on also. So then we work with a positive behavior rather than trying to extinguish a negative behavior. Mm. Work on a positive, don't extinguish the negative. So you're trying to develop the positive behavior to override the negative behavior. Like working in the to help them to cope with the negative. So don't get me wrong, they would still need to learn how to deal with uh, their emotions because many of them are unable to regulate their emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but what we want to do is to help them to, to at least have a positive platform to start with mm. And then we can work with the negative. Otherwise, they'll just be saying no to us all the time. We can't even access that part. Mm. 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 Okay. How, how young have you seen uh, the cases of o ODD? Um, I'm working with one that is uh, almost four years old. So three plus four. So yeah. So young. yeah. Is, is he or yeah. she uh, aware that they have? So this? the child would then, uh, the child would not know. The child would just lash out, scratch, you know, uh, bite and um, hit out at whoever that is caring for mm. uh, the child. Mm. Wow. That's like mm -hmm. a, I was watching. Um, I was I was on Instagram the other day and I saw a Rottweiler puppy. I think it was uh, two months old and it was going. Rawr, 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 rawr. Like, it's, like, <laughs> Whoa. It's, only, it's only two yeah. months. It's still a tiny puppy and it's so aggressive already. Mm, mm, mm. So well, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So yeah. we do behavioral management, behavioral training, or retraining for the child. But that's a little too it's young. Not, I mean, that, but but when you mentioned three four, years old, four just years four, old, four, yeah, four years Almost old, four, yeah. Okay, if it's four, Almost maybe it's four. okay, la. Four is fine. Four. If it's two, yeah, two, that's two. yeah. What could you do? Right? Holy water. I started yeah, working yeah. with the child. <laughs> yeah, I started working with the child when the child was uh, okay, we, we three we years old. Talk, talk about okay. this on air. No, not necessarily. Okay, 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 here we go. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at that trap. Good morning, Singapore, and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is award-winning psychologist, Dr. Geraldine Tan, and we're talking about ODD today, Oppositional Defiant Disorder. There you go. Jerry, um, 
would uh, you know we, we we want kids to do things. Uh, a kid yes. with ODD is probably the first thing that's going to come into their mind is no. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And they're doing this mm. just because you're telling them to do it. Yes. Would would giving uh, children like this a choice help? Work everything Very around nice. around yes. uh, work everything around choices. You can. So for the younger one, we try to use um, choices for them. You know, would you like this or would you like that? So we still put in some boundary. So, uh, but for the teens, it may be a little bit more difficult because they know what you're trying to do. So both choices can be no choice at all. So they can choose not to take those choices. Mm. Yeah, so that is also possible. I was just looking at Prashant's comment and he was mentioning whether reverse psychology might help. Mm. Sometimes they would perceive that it is their choice. So it depends on how you word it also. So the reverse psychology can work uh, when they, when the, the child with ODD perceives that it is his choice. <laughs> My goodness, uh, reverse psychology is so 80s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but if it works. <laughs> well, you don't have to buy into it, Glenn. It's okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness! You know, I'm 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 listening to you, uh, Jerry, and and we know, you know, you have loads of patients. You know, um, their their ages range from what four oh. all the way to maybe you know sixty. I don't know. I'm not sure. And I'm looking at you. How is it you have no white hair? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. Don't, don't I have to so loud, loud. La. I went to my hairdresser and he went, oh, you've got white hair now. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't say so loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is it your complexion is so flawless? You know, you, you look radiant. You know, if I were, if I were in your position, I think I, I, I would look like FD, actually. Hey, I know. <laughs> 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 Say what? No. Say what? I'm only blow. saying that is because you know. I mean, okay. you know, I mean, FD doesn't doesn't particularly like you know put makeup on. I don't. I don't and, bother. And take yeah. care of himself. Yeah, only you know, on Friday, his I face, guess. rather. Yeah. You know, I, I I didn't mean that. No, I'm no, sorry, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, but uh, don't you think? Don't yeah. you think? I mean, on a yeah. daily basis, she's so ch- chirpy and, yeah. and 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 positive. Maybe that's it. I guess that's what I'm. You know. Maybe everyone should be a bit more optimistic, you know, positive. I I, I just want to on ask a daily Jer- basis, I just no wanna, matter what. Yeah, I I want to ask Jerry this. You you deal yes. with people's problems all day, every day. How yeah. do you stay happy? How do you? I have a brilliant team. I have a a wonderful team that we um that we we can depend on each other. Now, that is really, really important. And then I was also chatting with um, a friend who brought his uh, mentee. So we we, we mentor uh, different students. Mm. So he he brought his mentee who's studying psychology. Um, And I think it was also a similar question she asked. And one thing we agreed on was that we enjoy what we do. We really um, go. We wake up in the morning wanting to go to work. Mm, We're excited wow. to go to work. Yeah, and that yeah. makes all that difference. So we're not dreading crawling out of bed. We are opening our eyes and say, okay, I don't know what today brings, but it's a new adventure every day. And that is the mindset that, you know, my team and I also hold each and every day with each and every event also because we really don't know what will come up. <laughs> I think that's so important, that's you know, really looking, important. looking at life as an adventure. Yeah. You know, if you don't do enough, your life is boring. True. You do too much True. sometimes and you stress yourself out. But it's yeah. an adventure, right? Yeah. It's about choices, yeah. right? It's about personal choices. Whatever choices you make, you have to live with it. Yeah. Uh, be responsible for it. Yeah. And enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Right? Very, very true. Mm. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. But all of you also enjoy your work. Yeah, we absolutely yeah, we do. do. We and do. We're very, we do. very uh, lucky. Yeah. We're we very blessed, you know, to mm. be doing what we're doing. But I, th- I think there are many people who... Um, 
you know, go through their their daily lives, um, you know, wondering if they should have done something else. Yes. Because they're not a hundred percent happy. What advice do you have for people like that, Jerry? So for the those at the crossroads, especially our a level or ib students that um you know are going through exams now and uh, considering what to do in their further education is to do something that you enjoy something that you know you're you're um you have an interest in so a lot of them would borrow ideas from people don't do that because if you are borrowing ideas oh this um profession is good or that profession is good or you know this profession earns you most money it, it might not fit your personality it might not fit your preferences and then you go into it feeling very miserable mm, mm. okay but what do you have to say to adults who are in that situation who are feeling a little bit jaded right now you know they're, they're, they're dissatisfied with what they're doing any words of positivity for them I mean, that, that is another session all by itself, but um, it depends, right? So for those that have the courage to do a career switch at any age, go for it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, for those that are, you feel already stuck in your job, then I would say, what are your other interests? So you want balance in life. So go, go look for other interests, hobbies that, you know, you can partake in in the evenings, in the weekends, during your holidays, and that provides that balance for you. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Very true. Thank you very much, Dr. Geraldine Tan. Up next, Banana Rama. I think it's very, very important. I think sometimes people go to work, Jerry, and they, they see the dark clouds and they forget that every cloud has a silver lining. You just need to find it. Mm. You just mm. need to find that silver lining. You know lining. what's worse? You're having problems at work and you're having problems at home as well. That's, that's, that's horrible. True, yeah. That's Ow. horrible. Right? Mm. That's tough. Mm. That's that so is tough. tough. That is very, very tough. Okay, we still have some time. How did we end up yeah, from ODC to this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess it was a little bit of a struggle. Thing. Like for me, right? I mean, I, I don't bother much. Maybe because I don't have kids, you see. Yeah, true. So I don't bother much about kids. But I always think about the adults. You know, the adults yeah. who are, who are mm. listening to us right now who need words of yeah. wisdom, positivity, yeah. in order for them to even help their kids, perhaps, yeah. you know, who are giving yeah. them issues. Yeah. You know, I mean, kids are obviously, I mean, they're very lucky if they get to see a psychologist like yeah. Dr. Geraldine Tan. But what about the families out there who are just preoccupied with so many things or perhaps maybe can't afford to see a psychologist mm. what then how do we help them out yeah there are so many uh resources out there now you know and the government just rolled out uh, a number of resources so you know go to the polyclinic they would be able to uh refer you on to different resources that are out there so you know if you are um, unable to to reach, let's say, a private psychologist or a counselor. There are the public. The public sector has has a lot of resources. Um, the schools would also be able to uh, link you up. So it's it's not only one uh, space that has all the resources there. You can approach anyone. Mm. But I think these days, yeah. uh, kids are so lucky. Eh? I mean, they, yeah. they, they really have... Comparatively, yes. Yeah, because, I mean, back in the day, right? And I don't mean to go back, you yeah. know, to when I was a kid. Mm. I don't think many people uh, uh, felt like, okay, if a kid is naughty or a kid is uh, acting up or whatever, to send the kid yeah. to a child psychologist. No, you know, you I'm, I'm sure it home. was happening at that time. But yeah. for the most part, you were dealt with at home. Very exactly. general. Yeah. Very general. Naughty uni, that's it. That's <laughs> you, it. You, yeah. you, you get scolded, you know, yeah. and then you, you, you kind of like, okay, you, you don't repeat whatever you did, yeah. you know, the next time around and, and, mm. and, and, mm. and so on, you know. Mm. But these days, it's like, you know, you guys go so deep into it, you know, mm. to, to mm. find out what, what the issues are. Yeah. So what we want is a generation of not survivors, but, you know, people that thrive, people that really bloom and blossom. Mm. Mm. 
And okay. I, yeah, I think that, that that is truly what we need. Truly what we need. Just to let you know, Jerry, Aloysius has come across and said, just listening to Je- Dr. Jerry every Tuesday morning makes me think more positively and I feel less <gasps> stressed. Ah, oh, thank you, Aloysius. That's the way. What are the kids saying? They're not saying anything. Kids are in school. The kids are in school. <laughs> They'll watch this later. Ah, yeah. They'll watch this later. Yeah. Awesome, uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Okay. Uh, Jerry, do you have any last words for anybody? You're always great with this. I do, I do. It's my favorite um, a therapist, and he's Donald Woods Winnicott, and he talks about attachment theory. And he says, um, what does... What is a normal child like? Does he just eat and grow and smile sweetly? No, that's not what he is like. The normal child, if he has confidence in mother and father, pulls out all the stops. In the course of time, he tries out his power to disrupt, to destroy, to frighten, to wear down, to waste, to wrangle, and to appropriate. At the start, he absolutely needs to live in a circle of love and strength with consequent tolerance. If he is not to be too fearful of his uh, own thoughts and of his imaginings to make progress in his emotional development. So, yeah, Winnicott is one of my favorite therapists out there uh, because I love attachment theory also. So he t- uh, oftentimes talks about the mother and child or the parent and child and how the child needs to throw that temper, needs to get angry and how the, the parent is a container to teach the child to deal with his or her own emotions so that the child can be more um, uh, regulated as uh, an older teen and as an adult later on. Mm. Right. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You know, in, in the weeks to come, can we talk about driven people and, and people who are not driven? You know, what drives them? Because, I mean, based on what we are... Well, yeah. I mean, based on what we are talking about today, you know, I was thinking, you know, these kids, right, who are naughty or, or, or angry or, or whatever. And, and we did mention early on that these people... Uh, these kids, you know, if they were given a task, some of them do it very, very well, you know. And I, I can't help but feel like some of the most uh, driven people, some of the most motivated people are the people who are not exactly the most patient people either. Mm. True. You know what I mean? So so what I'm saying is as kids, if you were to, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, turn them into... Uh, you know, from, okay, you got good, bad, ugly, right? Let's say you got good, bad, ugly kids, right? And, uh, you know, I've always felt like kids who are so good, they're boring. I, I like the naughty ones, slightly naughty, somewhere in between, you know, good and, and ugly. You know, just like, you know, a bit, yeah, a bit naughty as a, as a child. They're more interesting. Yeah. Um, but if, if we were to, if parents, for example, right, were to want their kids to be good, right, like kind of change their characters a little bit. Yeah. Because it's easier for them to manage. manage yeah. Yeah. That might affect their true potential. What do you think? So if we contain them too much, yes. they we might lose the actual person that they are, is it? Correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I say as a kid, right, just let them express themselves. Well, to If they're naughty... Just scold yeah, them to a right? degree. Yeah. That's it. Okay, yeah. you know, don't don't do that. That's a that's bad. Yeah, we must right? explain also. Like, cannot just yeah, yeah. You, yes. like, go. you have to explain why. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. But but just let them let them be as much as possible. Well, it's interesting because I I, I I was watching a guy on TikTok the other day. Uh, TikTok, um, and he said something. Parents should not be designers. They should be shepherds. A lot of people like to parents like to design their children i want my child to do this i want my child to be this i want so i'm going to design my child to be that and he goes no you should be a shepherd i guess you can give them the proper tools i mean uh, is that what he's talking about yeah Yeah, you 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 children are born with certain traits and you nurture those traits and the child develops into what the child is supposed to be Uh, you can't design a child 
You oh. Shall we talk about it next week? Yeah, let's do mm. that. Yeah. You, you, you design something. You design yeah, design something. something around that. That whole designer versus shepherd. I'd like. I'd like to have that discussion. Mm. Okay, yeah, that'll be interesting. Okay. interesting. Okay. okay. Alrighty. Thanks, what? It's at twenty-five already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's coming in already. We're gonna get cut okay. off. Designers and shepherds. Okay. We'll do. <laughs> okay. Bye, Jerry. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.